Hello everyone, welcome to Road to Glory, episode 11 in the series. We're going to cover everything with the update on the city. So if you've not watched the live stream, we did live stream on Monday. That is everything that I'm going to basically summarize in today's video as well as cover what I've been doing obviously on day 16. So with, over, with all that introduction, let's get into the video. So yes guys, we're here on day 16. So everyone kept wondering what day we are on on the server. Someone in the live stream did remind me a really good way by just checking your consecutive amount of logins. So we've been in 16 days on the server so far. We're at 1.56 million power. We're going to go over the power breakdown again for those guys who haven't seen it in the live stream right now. Um, earlier so don't you worry we also did push a bit of the sacred hall we've got past a bit of time and we did off camera use just a tiny bit of these speed ups here not too many just to bring it down by i think it was about 20 hours and then i've left it to do the last one day and three hours on its own and then on stream you guys know i was talking about my architecture and we are upgrading it so we're already at rank four Oh, we're going up to rank um, five next, which is going to give us 14% build speed, which is going to be beautiful. Hopefully, we can keep going to six and seven before it locks us out. Um, the reason why we're doing our architecture not pushing forward is the supply chains requires um, a, a city hall 18, and scholarship I do believe requires city hall. 21 as well so you need to get all the way through so right now we're chilling we did all our t3 research we could push forward again but this needs a, um, a research center of 17 this is going to go up and this t4 research again is all city hall 21 so as you can see the main focus right now on the account is to actually rebuild up all our speeds rebuild up all our resources and the way we've been able to do that as you've noticed is on the scout right now we've actually 100 percented all the regions anyone wondering why Kaltia isn't is just because of the jade river so if you're wondering why it's just the jade river is locked right now even though it classes as Kaltia. To get the area you need zone 2. So don't worry. You'll get 100% that in that regards. But what 100% means is. Off camera. Which we did start to do a little bit on stream. But I finished it all off camera. During some town hall meetings. Is we did all the other stuff. So everything in the supplies is done. Every village is done. Every wonder we can do so far. Is also done. Every one of these um, different observatories is complete. We only have this one on show. And again, it's the same, similar bug. It requires you to look in Lorcan, but we can't get that yet because we need a zone two, right? So let's go back into the account. So that's what we've been doing, slowly building up our resources so if we go here you can see we've got a nice amount of stacked on the lower bundles same in the wood and then the stone we've not got that much mana and that's what we're going to be working on today or hopefully in the next few days trying to get more mana and not use as much of it since we are pumping a load of it into our research right now and it is costing us lots and lots of mana for us to, to get that out but on the horizon is the City Hall 17. And the reason City Hall 17 is really big for us guys as a free to play player is actually the fact that we unlock our fourth march here. We get a nice little bit of troop capacity as well, which is obviously gonna help us and it's gonna bump up us up about 30,000 power here or about just under 30,000 shall I say, which is really nice. But the fact that we get a fourth March means we're gonna be able to do all of these events that we've been doing on stream, as well as empty the CP quicker and leveling up as well, an additional March. So now we can be leveling up our Guan and our Craig. We've been leveling up Elena with the Garwood behind her, which has been a really good tank synergy. 
then we could be starting to level up our Atheist now on his own, hopefully to get him leveled up ready. So when we do finish off this next skill, we can go straight into a 5 one, one, one state. And then we might pair him up with someone like Alowin just to give him a bit more mage, you know, comparison together. So it's been really good. Uh, we could also even potentially start leveling up Indis just because we are level 2 on the skill. Nothing really major, but it's the fact that she's a gatherer, right? So we can start using her as a gatherer as well as our Pan, our Ordo, our Keller, as well as our Chakcha. So we've been doing really good on that front on the heroes. Even though we haven't been really lucky and unlocking a load, we've got a decent great focus on the ones we have right so in the alliance as well we're growing day by day it's been really fun if you're wondering where we are we are in the vula server 65 in nxn is my alliance nicely active alliance and that's another reason i'm able to grow guys if you're wondering how i'm growing so quick if you're in a really active alliance and you're active yourself you're going to get a bunch of rewards it stacks together and it's going to allow you to push power really well so when we go into the power breakdown though we're going to showcase what is power and in the early game you're going to realize there's a really easy method of gaining it so right now i'm at 1.5 million power and almost half of it is in the hero power section so every single time guys we unlock one of our heroes and every time we're leveling them up we're gaining power Every single time we put a talent point, we gain power. As well as when they've got an artifact equipped, they also gain power. So we're able to have a really high power level with our heroes because we've hyper-focused on the ones we've been able to, right? So if we go back into that area again, you'll be able to see we've got a nice troop capacity power of 327,000. Nice little bit of power growing up day by day. We're going to go over that in a, in a moment. We've already talked about the tech, so the tech's growing day by day, and obviously our buildings is really good. It's going really fast, and we're focusing on everything we need to while maintaining a really low power rating when people don't realize it. You know, we're actually a lot more stronger when people are actually fighters, which is really good. It's a really good way to keep almost lower than you really need to be, as well as you know, pushing power. So our units, as you can see, we're all T3. We are upgrading them. And the way to upgrade them again, guys, you need to click the unit. So if you click the T2 unit here, there will be a little icon. So let's just speed this one up just so I can show you. I should be saving these up. But just for learning purposes, I'm going to teach you. So we've got our building right now. We click the archery. So you can spend six hours on these to train from fresh, which we will be doing eventually once we finish all the upgrades. But if we click onto the Archer Tier 2, you'll notice there's this little arrow. You click the arrow and it says promote. You choose the amount and then you just hit the button. Simple as make sure you've got the mana to do so and you're done. And now you're promoting your tier 2 into tier 3. You're not gaining any units, you're just promoting them, right? So that's that's the only difference, right? That's why you do save a, a bunch of time, because you've technically already trained them. So you've be, already had use out of the T1s in the early game, which we've needed for the bear and the giant raids with the tier 2. But now we're transitioning into the Thunder Rock and Hydra, where we need our tier 3 units mainly. And hopefully we can focus on unlocking one tier 4 unit, right? So when we come into the Dragon Shrines, we was able to on stream, if you want to check it out, freestyle the next one. So we're going to be doing a few of these later on again, just to push forward to 55 to get that juicy XP and gold key. And then we're going to be doing the little side branch again for the gold key. And this is going to allow us to stack them up for hopefully a, a summoning very soon, which we're going to be able to obviously pop on camera. So hopefully we get a new legendary in that opening and hopefully we get nico for our archers i hope we get him we'll soon see at the moment we have the passions for rations we're almost on the end of the days so it's a five day event we've been doing it again on the live stream so if you haven't checked it out click the live feed on my main channel and you're going to be able to watch the full day of me playing so you're going to see me you know in true honest work do what i preach you're going to see it all live plus in that live stream there is a flame dragon raid really fun to watch you're going to see me do a flawless run in the flame dragon raid 
So that's a really good one. So we've got this event on at the moment, which we are doing. And we are saving up to try and get these artifact keys because we really do want them. And as we see, we've got two out of two, which is great. So now we're going to focus on the legendary medals. And then afterwards, we'll go and finish up on the epic medals. And anything left, we'll grab the resources. That's how I'm planning my investment in this area. And the really cool thing is we've got Divine Depository on, which gives us a bunch, and I mean a bunch of resources and a potential for a gold key again when you open these chests and the way you get them is by killing patrols or even farming or doing resources and there we go we've got actually 10 keys right now and you know what for the video and it's coming to the end of it let's do a, a, a 10 key opening not even scripted we were doing this all live commentary like we do on the series in the live stream so as you just saw, we popped 16, we got a gold key by luck, so we're able to now use 10, so let's draw 10, hopefully. We get an epic, let's see what epic we get. We get some pan heads, and we actually get some guan win heads, double epic drop here, actually really good for a free to play player. Loving the fact that we're gaining some more guan win heads, allowing us, ooh, to get that juicy upgrade. And we hit the skill for beautiful luck for the 50-50 draw, allowing us to get that extra damage dealt bonus. And this is the fact that it's all damage. This is such a powerful ability compared to just having a bit of extra attack. So I do love having this 10% before we hit that skill, right? So we're doing really great on that aspect. We've just got an upgrade again on our pan, she's almost there at 5111, so we can upgrade her soon as well, which is going to be a really nice bit of power again. Our Chak Chak again has upgraded his skill, so he's expertise technically, but they don't have awakened blue skills in the game, so we don't have to worry about that. But he is complete, so now we have Chak Chak complete. We only have Keller to go, and we need to work on our order next. So now any of those sculptures for the track chart, we're going to be able to hit the scrap area now and we're going to be able to get rid of them, right? So we can actually scrap these track chart heads right now on camera. We can start saving up to get some of these epic tokens as well as some gold keys or legendary medals. We'll decide when we get a nice stash saved up what we're going to spend it on. So I hope you enjoyed the episode, guys. I hope you followed so far what we've been doing on the stream that we did do. I'm hopefully going to stream maybe um, the day this gets launched. But I will be streaming definitely on Wednesday, which will be the 19th. So if you missed it out, I'm sorry. Just check out the live stream again. You can watch the full live stream on YouTube all the way through. So don't you worry, guys. But until next time, I hope you enjoyed that episode 11 for Road to Glory series. Smash a like, comment, and subscribe. All those free to play players are loving the support from you guys. We've been growing day by day. We've been absolute monsters doing some great DPS rankings in those raids as well. So with all that said... I hope you enjoyed the episode, but stay safe, stay sneaky guys, and peace out.